Hello, students, and welcome to our lab activity this week on invertebrates. And our lab is on page 127 of your book. I'd like you to turn there now. And I'd like to explain that normally, if we were in the lab, we would be using live critters for this, or if you were out in the field, you could actually do this with live critters. But for today, we're going to be working through this activity that you saw in the previous video. So hopefully you enjoyed that little instructional video uh, where that young lady was out in an actual stream and collected benthic macroinvertebrates or bottom-dwelling big bugs, in order to determine the health of that water body. Because there are certain critters that only tolerate really clear, clean water. And there are other critters who can tolerate, well, basically just about anything. So today's lab activity uh, will mirror what that previous video did in real life, but you're gonna work through the same steps through the procedure. So what I'd like you to do right now, if you haven't done so already, is make sure your book is open to page 127. And it looks like this, the laboratory activity on invertebrates. And so the first thing as we always do is read over the problem, which says, how can you measure the health of a stream by examining the benthic macroinvertebrates. Again, think about that previous video that you watched and write a hypothesis. Feel free to pause the video now while you do that. All right, we're back. And you can see that the, uh, the procedures here are really quite simple. There's only three steps. Step one, is to examine and identify the species of invertebrates in your sample. I'll be providing you that sample in a moment. Then utilize the biotic index to check the species present. I'll explain that to you when we get to it. And then finally, step three, calculate the biotic index, then clean up your materials. So this is the page you're going to be working on here and I've laid it out in a very particular fashion for you to simplify things, but you're gonna need another couple pages in your book to help you. So if you turn the page beyond the two classroom activities and you stop at page 130 and 131, you will notice that pages 130 and 131 open up so you can see both pages together, and this is a key to common macroinvertebrates that you might find right here in your old own township. Uh, you can actually do this activity. I would suggest waiting until the weather warms up a little bit. Uh, in the spring is a fantastic time to be doing this activity, but you can follow the same procedures as that previous video. Go out and collect some bugs from the water and undoubtedly, you will be able to use these two pages to identify the types of common critters that you might find around here. So this is the identification key, uh, these two pages. But there's another page that you're going to need. So turn the page to 132, and here we go. This is the Pollution Tolerance Index. You're going to be getting a PTI value of between one and four. And you'll be able to determine which number, the higher number or the lower number, will indicate a cleaner body of water than another. So on this page is the sample of critters that we're going to be working with. So use your imagination today and imagine you actually collect these particular specimens in your kick net. Now, what do you do? Well, you examine each one of these critters and you're going to identify them using the previous two 
pages. So look at the pictures. Once you've identified them, <clears throat> you're going to check off the box here in one of these four groups with these various names of these critters that may or may not exist here. So let me give you a for instance. You're going to start with this critter. It's a benthic macroinvertebrate. It's a big bottom dwelling bug. You're going to go back to the identification key pages and you're going to identify it. Its name will exist on this list in either group one, two, three, or four. And if you find it, now I'm not saying this is what it is, but if you identify it as a mayfly nymph, find a mayfly nymph on the list and put an X in the box. Check it if it's present. Now, before we go any further, and you're going to do that for each one of them, before we go any further, though, I want to point these different groups out. Look at group number one. Stonefly, main, mayfly, caddisfly, dobsonfly, uh, etc. All of these critters in group number one are critters that you're only going to find in really clean water. And they have a value of four. So I'll give you a hint. The higher your final PTI value, the cleaner the water is going to be. If you jump down to group four here, the pouch snail, the tubifex worm, the bud midge, the red-tailed maggot larva. I mean, just think about the names of those critters. These are things that you would find in kind of nasty water that you would not want to drink, okay? Um, you're not going to find maggots and blood midges in really clean, pristine water. That's why things in group four have an index value of one. The lower the number, the dirtier the water. Uh, let me just add a little bit more info here. If you wanted to go swimming in a water bottle, but water body, not a water bottle, <laughs> a body of water, like a pond or, a, or a stream or a river, check out what's living in it first. You don't want to be going swimming in a body of water that is infested with leeches and maggots. Just think about it. You know, that doesn't make sense. But if you find stonefly and mayfly living in that water, you're only going to be living in water that's clean enough for you to swim in. Now, it may not be clean enough for you to drink, so don't drink untreated water. But it also is an indicator of other organisms that live there. For example, springtime is right around the corner. Some of you might like to go fishing. If you like to go fishing for certain species, like, let's say, trout, rainbow trout, brown trout, uh, you know, if you like to go fishing for trout, trout cannot tolerate polluted water. Trout will typically only be found in water with these kinds of critters. And if you like to fly fish, that's pretty advanced in the world of fishing. But if you get into fly fishing, you will have to become very familiar with the types of benthic macroinvertebrates that are emerging at a particular time of day because that's what the fish will be biting. So learning the identity of some of these critters can help you not only determine the health of the water body, but also can help you out if you like to go fishing. And you'll be a, a much better fisher person if you, uh, if you know what kinds of critters live in the water. Now, let me take this a step further and explain to you what you're going to do after you've identified what lives in the water. Once you have the boxes checked off, and even if you have, let's say, two mayfly nymphs in this sample, you're only going to check the box once because you're only checking these boxes if they are present, not how many there are. So once you have checked all of the appropriate boxes, the next step is going to do some calculation here. 
This page will be very helpful when you're completing the lab activities. Use this page. So once you've tallied up the identity, it says total number of species. So let's say there are three of these species from group one existing in this sample. You would write the total number of species is three. Then you would multiply that by the index value of four. So you take three times four, and that would be equal to 12. You're going to do that in each of these groups. Add up the number of species, and then multiply by the value of that particular group. So if you've got, let's say, two of these species, you tally up two times the value of three. Two times three is six. You write a six down. You do that for all four groups. Now at the end here, you're going to add the index values of each group together and divide by the total number of species. Let me explain that to you. The second numbers, the second number that you calculate for each group, the, the bottom line, bottom line, bottom line, bottom line, you add those four numbers together. That will equal some number, a bigger number. You're gonna take that number and you're going to divide it by the top line for each category, which will be a smaller number. If you do the math correctly, your pollution tolerance index, otherwise known as your answer, will be a value between 1 and 4, more specifically 1.0 and 4.0 your answer will be between those two values. If you get a negative number, you did the math wrong. If you get a number that is smaller than one, you did the math wrong. If you get a number that's greater than four, you did the math wrong, probably with a decimal point. So your answer should be between one and four. The higher the number, the closer to four, the healthier the water body. The lower the number, the closer to one, the less healthy the water body, and you don't want to even go in that water. So if you need to review this video and watch it again, as far as the steps that I've explained here, feel free. Otherwise, you can get started with this, this sample of macroinvertebrates on page 132. Use the previous two pages to identify them, tabulate the species, do the math, and then you can go back to the lab page and complete your observations, answer the questions, and write your conclusion. Only then will you be finished with today's lab activity. Once you're done, Great job. Use any remaining time to study for tomorrow's quiz. So good luck. Have some fun looking at these critters, even though they're just pictures of them today. But uh, again, you can do this in real life and use the same paper here in real life to see what a stream near you could be designated as a healthy or an unhealthy water body. So until tomorrow, I'll say bye-bye.